Zach Sang Show, happy Friday. We got Dan, we got Heather, and we have Miley Cyrus here. Yo, yo. Okay. Welcome. What's thank up? you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you, I love it in here. You look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so, so much. Oh. Thank you. I was hoping someone would notice my little, like, tutu skirt. Oh, can't it's miss it. Uh, really phenomenal. That's usually what I try to go for with my outfit. Can't Something miss. Something you can't miss. And you can't mistake me for anyone else. Miley Cyrus is going to be taking over the show all five hours. Get ready. Because it's going to be a real, it's going to be a trip. I can't wait. It is. Uh, shall we start by playing Malibu? Please, the only way. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, give us the briefest story on this song. I'm not very good at being brief. I'm a, cha- <laughs> give, I'm a chatter. Give me a story. I, uh, I wrote this song in the car on my way to The Voice, and uh, I, I usually drive myself, but as I'm actually getting more and more scared as I get older of my own driving uh, because I realize <laughs> that I'm terrible. Good. Uh, and my life, I feel like now I understand the value of life and that I shouldn't really be driving because I'm, I'm horrible. So I had a driver <laughs> driving me that day, and I was trying not to sing it out loud because I didn't want to be like a creep in the back seat <laughs> writing music and like singing out loud. I was too embarrassed. And so then I actually recorded this song in my trailer once I was at The Voice. And so this all kind of took place in... Weird, like you amazing. Know, yeah, it's very weird the way that this this came about. But I was driving by the beach and felt inspired. That's how you know. Yeah, when songs come together like that, that's how you know it's I mean, gonna be something I, yeah, special. Yeah, now everyone can listen to it in the car. It's like I wrote it in the car. It's made for the car. Like you were saying, yeah. all songs sound better in the car. Yes. Mm-hmm. Intro your song on radios across the country. All right, this is my new song, Malibu. I'm so excited for everyone to listen to it. Beautiful. And we're playing it. Look at yeah, that. I know <laughs> the way it works. The Whoa. magic of it all. <laughs> yeah, it works. Is it weird, like, listening to yourself? Yeah. yeah. I always take I take it off now. I, I want to listen. To, okay, well, actually, I got to get this video. Me and my mom made a choreographed dance to Malibu last night, and it's... Well, it's, we are going to... We want to learn the dance wait, later. It's amazing. You, I'll teach it to you. you I would yeah, love please. nothing more. I would love nothing more. It's complex. It's long. Uh, I, I got all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we started as, like... Let's record this. And then Bradley, who had to record it, then like two hours later was still recording. Because oh. we were like, no, we need to do it in this lighting. No, we need more space. No, we need to be able to go to the left more on our shuffle. And then by the end of it, we were in matching tracksuits. What? <laughs> yeah. Love it. I yeah. feel like your whole, there's been many moments in your career that have had dances for songs. Yes. And I feel like tracksuits have made an appearance before. Yes. Unicorn, w- yes. unicorn onesies, has, I think, is the, is the most yeah, memorable. Uh, I've had some track suits. Yeah. I rocked some track suits on my way to the VMAs with all my dancers. Very um, nice. And we did some of our some of our moves. Yeah, track suits I'm, I'm into. Uh, do you still remember the hoedown throwdown? I actually, it's so funny. That, like, for some reason got stuck in my head the other day. <laughs> like, some sort of, like, sick karma or something. Oh, I was at, <laughs> it was, like, something wrong. And then I was, like, side to side. And I was trying to remember. And I can't remember all the moves. But I remember it was, like, I know the clap three times. Yes. But I can't remember the rest. And then it was, like. There was arm movement. There, <laughs> there is some sort of arm movement that I couldn't remember. I think that is what it is. Yes. You remember, dude. Like, it was this and back. And then, like, I always want to go here, but I know that isn't hoedown enough. But <laughs> it, it makes me want to go there. I can't remember it. And then it's all with the feet, too, it's you know? All, there's so much footwork. It's all with the heels. I, I don't do footwork in my choreography. <laughs> me and my mom stick to, like, these moves. Hand pumps. All with the elbows. <laughs> yeah. We have some foot stomps. I'm a dancer, you know? I can no, pick you're it up easy. No, you are You've got those long dancers legs. Someone asked me to do that with this music. They were like, oh, we're sad. You're like, you're not going to be dancing anymore because this song isn't, like, a dance song. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Fist pump to the right three times to the left. <laughs> elbow, elbow, stomp, stomp, point, point, head, twirl. Like, hello. Duh, hello. When, when they know that? What are you talking about? When you hear people make assumptions like that about your music, right? Yeah. Like, how do you feel? Because it's your art. It is personal. I think I, like, forget things, too, of what I've done. Like, every time I make a new record, I forget kind of what the last one was. And I get lost. Just because I don't listen. Once I... It would be weird if I was at home just, like, rocking out to the dead pets or bangers yeah. all the time. <laughs> so I, you know, once I'm, like, done touring and everything, yeah. I don't listen to my music very much. And so I think I get so far away from the last project, and I honestly, like, I can't remember the, the hoedown throwdown. What? Like, you know, so I think I, I grow so much that I forget what even the last sound was, so I never hold myself back with, oh, what was the last record like? I want to make sure that it sounds, you know, yeah. cohesive with that. I just let myself go because... I'm very different from the last record and from the last one and the show and everything that I've ever done. It also mimics life evolution. Yeah, for sure. I think people like use change as a, as a bad thing. They, you know, something that you can use as, you know, tell someone, oh, you've changed. Like that's supposed to be bad when really that should be a compliment. You yeah. know, most of the time I think it's become a derogatory thing that it really shouldn't be. Life gets crappy when you don't change. Yeah, exactly. You get very stuck. You become my dad. 
<laughs> I, my dad, that's his biggest fear. Change is the real C word. But, but does he still flip phone it or? He has a Blackberry. Oh my God. Two Blackberry. That's Two necessary. Blackberry. Do, do we have like the real keyboard? Yes, two Blackberry. They both have the same number, he, so he says, but I think there's one secret number that I, that I <laughs> don't like know a about. burner phone. I'm like, why do you have two if they're both the same number? He's like, well, this one's got all my pictures on it, you know, from like 2002. And this one's got all my pictures on it from like my newer pictures, you know, and then they're much better. But when he sends me a picture, he's like, look at the sunset, but like, it's on a Blackberry, and it's a little bit like I don't, I can't really see it. It's yeah. not right. It's not right. So, but he then he takes my phone. He said he would never use an iPhone, and then he took my phone, and I didn't get it back for three hours. And when I did get it back, it had like five hundred photos because he realized how good the camera was. So he just took pictures of all of Everything. our dogs, all our cows, leaves, sticks, grass, <laughs> trees. I got a lot of pictures of creeks. So he came back with just like iPhoto full of nature. Dude, that's my mom. Yeah, it's like a hillbilly iPhoto. It was really good. <laughs> but that's- it was bad. So what can we expect from the new album? Because when you put out bangers and dead pets, nobody knew what to expect. Yeah. I think um, that's kind of what's been fun for me is I never know what I'm going to do next. So then there's no way for anyone else to know either. It just kind of starts to happen. Like you can be driving in a car and write a song. And so um, I think with this record, I really went into it with the most grounded feeling. And I think trust in that I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think honestly, this, this record was mostly known that I know what my fans really want right now too. And I think people really have enjoyed the voice and getting to see me as a, as an artist and someone that they can relate to again, rather than someone that slides down their own tongue. It's hard to relate to someone on a, you know, riding across thousands of people on a hot dog. But, but so, when you yeah. say, you're right. It's like, yeah, not really the girl next door. But like, at the time it was also relatable because yeah. everybody goes through that period in their life where they're rambunctious and they're rebellious. Yeah. And this, you know, this has just been your journey. And, and I think also it's a part of being funny. I like, yeah. to, I like to laugh and be funny and not be serious. So like riding on the hot dog to me is like, all right, you're going on this big tour, and guess what I'm going to do? I This is the only time in my life I'd ever get to do this, to be suspended <laughs> above, you know, 20,000 people on a hot, hot dog <laughs> and uh, slide down my own tongue or, you know, dance with a big giant. I had a big fluffy orange bird that was, like, mm-hmm. 12 feet tall. So that's the only time I was going to get to make something like that, you know, and be able to, like— put it into a, you know, put it into a tour and let other people enjoy it as well because I really enjoy it. And that was straight from your mind. Yes, that was, yeah, that's when I saw weed. Oh, uh, no. But uh, it was very, yeah, it was very, like, on that time where I just got to come up with a, whatever I could think of, and then there was an editing process because yeah. basically every song I had a complete vision for. And so I had to get the, you know, the mascots and everything that I wanted, but without the, with the show still feeling real. I felt like Bangers was... It was surreal and it was fantasy, but it yeah. also had a sense of grounding, especially when we had a C stage. We did like a little acoustic set, which was kind of my fan's favorite part. Dude, you, you've managed to do that in every one of your tours, yeah. right? Where you just break it down. And I remember when I, I interviewed you for the first time, um, they took me in, you were sound checking, and you did your cover of These Four Walls. Yeah. And when you do it, it's just you, a guitar, and I think somebody on like a box. Yeah. A, a cajon or something. Yeah, I was. He hates oh. the cajon now because I made him play it too much. I just <laughs> asked him to play hands. it the other day, and he's like, no more cajon. I hate it. <laughs> he's like, you've done it since you were 12 years old. Move on from the cajon. We <laughs> but, just had this conversation. But there was such a sense of purity and the way you were able to just make such a big arena feel so small in that moment. Yeah. And just when you stripped everything back and you let your vocals tell a story. It was just, I, I, I still have that moment in my brain. I look forward to the gigs ago. coming up too. We're doing, you know, different radio shows around the country and, and going just to different places right now and getting to, um, when I go to New York and getting to be on the Today Show and do all these cool things where I get to go and play my music a little bit. Even Malibu, I, I, I for Billboard, I'm going to do it full band, but actually it's been hard for me to do that. I think for the energy of that room, especially in Vegas, I want it to feel really big. Yeah. And so I'm doing it with a full band. But actually, me and my me and my band, we really like doing an acoustic. So we're really excited for the places where we'll be able to do Malibu acoustic because it really leans itself to that. Are so, you going to get balloons for Billboard? You know this. Yeah. 5,000 to be exact. <laughs> yeah, I had 1,200. And uh, then it just was feeling like it wasn't going to fill the space. So now we have 5,000. 1,200 wasn't enough. 1,200 was never, no. not not when you're wearing a tutu skirt that's not like 5.45 in the morning. <laughs> are you joking? Yeah, come on. So are you planning a new tour? Because like, how are you going to top the bangers tour? It's It's been on my mind for sure. I, uh, I'm trying to figure out now, like, 
how do I get a waterfall into like oh. a stadium? Because you know, there's that crazy waterfall in my in the Malibu. Yeah. Uh-huh. And people have really been liking that. Um, so I, I would love to do stuff like that where I can maybe, like you said, make a big room feel small, bring nature into a room as well. I'd love to figure out how I could make it really feel like to me, Malibu and Nashville, everyone always thinks I'm the only one that feels this way, but they actually have an essence that are very true to each other. Yeah. They're very similar in the way of I've got my pigs, I've got my horses, got my dogs. I want people, I love nature. I love being outside. Um, I, yeah, I have a hard time even just coming up on this tour right now, knowing that every day I'm not going to be able to be with my pigs. That's like, kind of yeah, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it hurts me. Yeah. So I got to definitely put my pigs on the big screen. So they, remember I had a giant Floyd as well. I had yeah. my dog that was like 80 feet. So I, I got to get a pig pig, pig and puddles. I have two, so I can't just do one. What's the new one? Puddles? I'm- puddles. She okay. sits for Oreos. Oh, she's a genius. I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. everyone, everyone is like, yeah, that's not that weird. Like everyone does this. So if you need somebody to come on tour and handle the 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 air plants and your pigs, exactly. I'm around. I I definitely need air plants around me to keep me grounded. You do. Yeah, little. That's my. This is my nature. I thank you for bringing nature just to me. You're welcome. Low maintenance. Low maintenance. Love. This is me. This is my soul and my being. And (laughs) this is perfect. Malibu. Okay, it's a great record, man. Thank you. This is obviously the new you. Thank you. Right? Yeah, I think it's just the same, but in a new new time. You yeah. know, I think every time is always the the, the same me, but in you know new in new inspirations. Listening to a lot of Elvis these days. Uh, really, like even just digging into thinking about growing up, how weird the way that I grew up and how different it is than anyone else. I mean, I got to spend time with Johnny Cash or Waylon Jennings and going and hanging with George Jones or like, you know, so it breaks my heart a little bit that Blake Shelton's known as like the country singer mm. on The Voice when it's like, man, Dolly Parton ain't your godmama. <laughs> yeah. So let's not try it. Exactly. You know, so I'm really excited for the next season of me getting to like dig into that like country sound, even with my record. And I wouldn't say this record is country at all, but I think it definitely has my my roots influence. For sure. And you've always been able to kind of like straddle both ends of it, right? Yeah, I think you you're never fully country, but you really you brought you brought country pop a little bit. I think being able to do that with a mix of now with my last record, even you know, my last record had like some psychedelic rock, yeah. but I think for me I wanna be able to have it be non defined, which is what I like to do with anything. I like people to do that with gender, with sexuality. So I think the same thing with music should be the same way that I am with my foundation, which is allowing people to be whoever they want to be and not have to define it. I think we've gotten, people love answers. People love labels, not in a bad way, but our first thought as a, you know, as a baby is what, what is this called? You know, your parents hold up a ball, an app or whatever, and you're supposed to learn and know how to call everything by its name. And so I think that's something that I've tried to break that with my music. Wow. Uh, Malibu. I feel like it's a story of love. It's the story of a relationship. Yeah. And I, I also feel like down to the production, I feel like the way this song builds, it builds like a relationship. It yeah. starts slow and then it gets faster and faster and faster. Yeah. It's also about how, um, you know, I think relationships sometimes, I think the worst thing a- about them can be that they don't actually give you freedom, that yeah. people find that there's ownership involved or um, this song is about the freedom that a relationship can give or that a relationship brings you to somewhere that you would never be. I would never live in Malibu if my dude wasn't a surfer. I am from Nashville. I (laughs) never thought I would live by the beach. And that's what this song is about. It's saying, but you brought me here and I'm happy that you did. Um, But then it's saying, because now I'm as free as birds catching the wind because now I found my own reason to be at the beach. I'm not here just now. I'm not staying here just because you did. I'm staying here because that feels right to me. So it's also about um, just finding myself, uh, but finding that through a relationship, which usually I think people get lost in their relationships. Okay. And how do you keep from getting lost in a relationship? I think remember um, just that that happiness, no matter what, that it stay where you're happy, and then and then when you're not, be able to find things that will give you newness and happiness again. And I think also allowing people to have their freedom, um, not feeling like every second you have to be together, that you can't do anything except live for each other. It's, I think that's what is wrong with a lot of relationships yeah. if you don't have time to be able to be yourself. And I think a lot of people get put in a box because. I just love that my dude doesn't really make me do that. He gets to do his thing. I get to do my thing. And then he inspires cool music um, and gets me to go to the beach more than I ever would. (laughs) Independence. Yeah. Were you nervous showing him Malibu for the first time? I thought he was going to be like, dude, can you not like sing about where we live? So a bunch of people like, why don't you just put out our address in the first verse? Yeah, I think he, I think he was a little bit like, so our safe place is gone that you were, you were singing about. This used to be my place of freedom. And he even said the one day he was like, 
man, like, you know, there's never paparazzi in Malibu. Like, it's so weird. I'm like, yeah, that is really weird. <laughs> like, I have no idea why they'd be outside of our house right now. Um, yeah, so I think that was a little bit on blast. But uh, the people, my neighbors dig it. My neighbors <laughs> really love this song. It's a good anthem for the neighborhood. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I was just saying yesterday that everyone is all of a sudden from Malibu. Yeah. Like, people come up from Wisconsin, and they're like, I was born and raised in Malibu. I'm like, I don't believe you, <laughs> like, at all. Yeah. You say pop. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So why did you feel like right now was the time to release this song? Um, I think it's a good time for summer, and I think everyone's been kind of calling it their summer jam, their summer anthem, oh, yeah. but that's yeah. not what I even thought about. But I wrote it last summer. Um, and so it felt really good for me to drive around in my car and listen to it. I wrote it in June of last year. Wait, so, okay. How <laughs> long have you been riding around with this record? About a About year. About a year. Okay, and I, I rolled <laughs> I around with my, win- I, yeah, with my windows down a lot. And I was just <laughs> hoping no one recorded. It was like, Miley's new single. Here it is. Like, you know. And how many songs do we have to back this one up? I, uh, you know, on my last record, I had 24 songs, so I've decided to reel it in what? because it, that was a lot of information to give people. Uh, right now, I'm at about 11 songs on my next record um, with kind of a very cool intro, outro. Actually, some of my record, we we recorded, I left a microphone outside at night so we could record our coyotes, crickets, Ooh, frogs. Um, we have a frog that was reoccurring for the entire time I've been recording my record. I named him Killer Angel Baby. <laughs> Does he and get credit? So we on one of my songs, it's going to say featuring Killer Angel Baby. Um, yeah. And, and we really gone through the entire process where Killer Angel Baby then was looking for a mate. And now there's like 10,000 little wow. frogs. So I have the entire, like, I have a whole family on like a whole, like, life and love and I have their entire relationship recorded. That's really beautiful. Yeah, really weird that I do this that at night I'm like going down and recording nature like in the rain <laughs> at the creek but that's that's what's going to make the record. So I, I just, want people to feel like they're in Malibu really at my house. I was just going to say that difference is going to make that record. Yes, right? it's that's- very cool. Right now the first sound before any notes are sung or no strums on the guitar, no beat, you just hear <laughs> that's 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 the intro of my record. It's probably so pure. It's perfect. It's oh. amazing. And then a couple hours. And then the birds. This one bird is pitchy. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. Let's <laughs> give her notes. He's a little bit pitchy. So, uh, but I liked the rhythm. So I went and did it. I was like, <laughs> but I redid it. Because did, I liked her melody, but she was pitchy. Did you talk I, she's to a her, girl. Did, did you uh, talk to her attorney for I listened permission? To, yeah, or? I listened to it. No, the animals have no lawyers, which are great. Okay. So I can just get away with a lot. Uh, no licensing, no weird anything. I don't have to even pay them for a feature. Wow. But I, th- I got to get merch going with like I Heart Killer Angel Babe. That's of course. Like yeah. I think people are going to be super into it. Well, I think we start that here. Hey, you know? I'll bring you some teas. Please. Wait. He's dope. I actually played it. I went and played my music, you know, over at Apple before it came out. Spotify, cool. all these places. And they were like. We know who we want to sign, Killer Angel Baby. Yeah, <laughs> Apple Music. Frog. Yeah, exactly. Hey, guys, it's time to check the mail. Mail talk. Yeah. Every day we get mail. You hit us up at Zach Sang Show on everything. Today's mail is all Miley Cyrus questions. Yay. Um, we start with Steph. Play that question. Oh, my gosh. Who her biggest inspiration is musically? Who is it? My biggest inspiration is Elvis Presley, Ooh. the king and, and fashion icon. Yeah, really? Ooh. Yeah, come on. I'm always looking for my white jumpsuit. How, how, have you been to Graceland? Of course. Yeah, of okay. course. It's like Disney. It's like Disneyland for the South. That and Dollywood. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dollywood. I basically grew up there. Okay. Next question from Trevor. What, what's her favorite food? Oh snap! Um, my favorite food ever is probably fried corn. What? Oh. It's bomb. I know. You probably don't have it that much. Oh, that's it's southern. Specialty, fried corn. How do you make it? Is it on the cob or is you, it off? They do it like, sli- okay, so it's sliced. It's not like little kernels. Okay. It's sliced in sides and then oh, fried in sides. Okay. And then you get to like dip it in whatever sauces you want. But I'm a spi- I like spicy. I also wow. like Indian food. So I either like it real country or really spicy in Indian. You're not getting the fried corn in LA though, are you? Fried corn I am and I can tell you the spot. Dude. You <laughs> got to have it. It has truffle and it's a ball. Oh, Ooh. you have a lot. Yes. <laughs> but I only, I really only care about fried corn. That's like my like dying meal. Wow, that's you just got me really excited. Fried okay, corn. <laughs> um, last question. Oh, we have another question from James. He hit us up on Facebook. He wants to know: Would you ever want to duet with Noah? Ever? Definitely. I uh, I wrote this song in a dream that I had with Noah, where we were going to the movie theater, and I wrote this song in that she told me was her favorite song in the dream. Um, and I would love to have her actually listen to that song and see if she likes it, and if it's a, a song that she likes. Wow. What, yeah. How often do you have dreams that are so vivid like that that you can actually translate that to paper? So this was kind of weird. Like, I, I, yeah, when I wrote it, I thought it was someone else's song because it got stuck in my head all day. And then I realized that actually it had just come from I thought this really happened because yeah. it was so vivid. 
So I yeah. thought me and Noah had really gone, and Noah's, Noah's really cool. Noah's the cool <laughs> younger sister. So yeah. she <laughs> has to tell me what's up, because... I listen to a lot of like I listen to a lot of old school music, so she has yeah. to tell me what's new and like how to keep it keep it popping. Yeah. So uh, so <laughs> yeah. Noah yeah. Noah's always the one that's like, have you heard this new Bruno Mars song? Yeah, she like keeps it going, and so she's kind of like my cool meter of knowing what's up. So she uh, yeah, so I, I would love to have her do something like that. And actually, I've sent her a couple of my songs that I had written back in you know when I was in Bangers with Pharrell or Hit Boy, yeah. and um, so her and I would love to work together for sure. How do you feel when your sister has a record that hits radio? I mean, it's keeping it's it in the family. I hope everybody is always cool with her. I think you know, for me, people were really hard on me sometimes, yeah. um, and I hope that they don't really do that with her because I think I think they've given me enough. They've given me <laughs> and my dad enough. Right? Give Noah a break and like be compassionate, and I think also let her grow up and let her do her thing and and don't try to make her feel any type of way. I think make her only feel great like she is. Don't ever try to make That's her feel insecure. Beautiful. Last question here in mail. This is from Melissa. What in life are you the most proud of? Uh, the Happy Happy Foundation. Of that's, course. That's, yeah, definitely. That's the only thing that makes this worth it for sure. What are you doing right now in the foundation mm. and what's the vision for the future? Yeah, I think even with my new music, I think something that I really want to be clear was that the foundation and me as an artist or as an actress isn't separate. Um, even being able to do movies, the last the last film that I did, or I guess it was actually a TV show for Amazon, it was with Woody and it was about a female revolutionary. And So I think really just um, always choosing roles, always making songs that represent my foundation so that's never two separate things. Because I think sometimes, especially like in the celebrity world, it kind of seems like you're just supposed yeah. to have a foundation and that's kind of separate from you. It's a tax um, break, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like silly and I think I want... Um, I'm a vegan, so all my outfits are always vegan. Cool. Uh, no leather, no fur, none of that. And so, like, really just promoting, I, I think, um, human rights, animal rights, environmental rights by everything that I'm doing, by what, what I'm wearing, what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and I think even this is a good time that, you know, for me now, um, being so in love with the ocean, I think it's even more important for me to talk about environmental rights and us really becoming responsible with the way we treat the planet because I would love the sky so blue next to you line to be able to stay and it not be, like, <laughs> This Brown. guy's so black. Yeah, right. yeah, it's so beautifully small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is really a foundation that represents society today and everything that we're going through as humanity, right? Right. And what we face, whether it be socially, environmentally, it's across everything. Right. I think for me, I'm just a person too that's changed so much, and I've been really. I think you know a lot, especially with my fans. I have a great family and support system and friends that have really supported all my changes, and so I think yeah. that's why allowing. Um, you know, people that would like to transition, people that want to be themselves. I really support that because I know that I feel like there's been so many times in my life where I've transitioned to so many different things that are so unlike the other, but they were who I wanted to be truly. And so I think allowing people to do that, no matter whether it's with their sexuality or their gender, whatever it is, oh, be what you want. So much respect and appreciation for what you're doing. Thank you very much. Truly. And you're, you're helping make the world a better place. So. I hope so. I hope so. That's cool. the goal. I don't want the wrecking ball on my on my tombstone. I'd like it to be happy hippie <laughs> You want that smiley that, face. Exactly. With the HHIs. <laughs> Okay, I, I I gotta I gotta bring up marijuana for a second, please, because it, it, <laughs> please, uh, my, yeah, please, it, it plays a big role in my life. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a great thing for people. I just can't smoke it. Well, so when was the first time you smoked it? Um, I probably shouldn't say this. You might kill me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but in Nashville, which is not very good, I'll be honest, not the not best, very but. legal. So I probably shouldn't say that either. But um. <laughs> But yeah, not very good. Uh, California, it's hard to not indulge and not love weed because it's so amazing. It's so okay. The first time you smoke it, do you remember what happened in your life that you said? I want to do this every day forever. Oh. Yeah, no. Th let's go to the <laughs> first I smoked one. it once and said, "Okay, I'm going to do this every day forever." Well, you love the way you felt. Uh, love the way I felt. Also, it, I am a very like I, I'm kind of. I'm not affected by much. Like everyone yeah. else, when I ask them, do you think I seem different that I don't smoke weed? They're like, no, you pretty much seem the exact same. Same thing. So it really didn't change me that much. Um, I think I just was able to not be so obsessive, which I'm very OCD, um, and which is why I'm not smoking right now is because I kind of need to obsess a little bit and yeah. like make sure everything is perfect and make sure the 5,000 balloons drop right on the Oz. <laughs> you know, all yep. those, those kind of things. Um, That's and, interesting. And, yeah, so just to be able to be more focused uh, and and not be kind of like, oh, it's fine. The balloons can drop whenever they want. You know, that's kind of me when I'm stoned. But but not now. Not now. Now it's like they have to drop on the Oz. When Emu frolics through the field, the balloons <laughs> drop. And that's the only way. How'd you yeah. pick Emu for that music video? I was wondering that. 
Okay, so we were just talking. This is bad. I have seven dogs. I love them all equally. <laughs> Emu gets special treatment. He's my he's my prince. I call him Mr. Perfect. I'm like, come here, perfect. Come here, my king. I call him my king. Oh, I, uh, it's really bad. Come here, my king, <laughs> my master, my prince. Um, it sounds like you have a favorite. It's really, really bad. And so the other dogs, they were just saying I'd be on phone calls, like on important calls or whatever. And I'd be like, all the dogs, be quiet, whatever. Come here, Emu. Uh, it's like, all the dogs, shut up. Emu, you're perfect. Uh, but he is. Everyone else is barking and going crazy and rallying each other up. And his favorite thing to do, I always try to make like if my dogs had a date, like a dating account, what yeah. would they're like, I like walks on the beach or whatever. His would be, I like laying on top of the air. Vent. That's what he likes to do. My one dog likes to stare into space blankly, wow. like just like stare at you, um, sit on the couch and also stare at you. D- do you think the dog's judging you when they're staring or? The dogs, I, my dog's name is Mary Jane. Mary she Jane. Said. So, so Ma- I think she that's just, ironic she's that she just a little space. bit. Yeah, she's yeah. just a little bit. She was born high. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. There was a time where it seemed like you were at every party, every club, you were just always out. Are you just kind of over that whole scene? Yeah, you know, uh, I think, yeah, I think I overdid it. I think I, I, got, I got a little worn out. And also, you know, I, I think for me, you know, spending time in nature and with my dogs are just the most important thing. And I think I got to do all that stuff really young because a lot of the times, too, I think this is, I think that's what the hard things about people being young and being able to have access to booze or to pot or whatever it is because then by the time you're here, I'm, old, I'm kind of, I've kind of done it and I'm kind of yeah. just kind of, Tired of it and um, and tired of talking to people that I don't necessarily wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really talk to. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, I feel like you end up saying a lot of things that you don't mean or, uh, you know, you just end up not being around people that, that you care about so much. It's just people that want to keep the party going, maybe so they don't have to face something else. Look, yeah. I love to party. This is great. I think we're partying now, though. I think partying is what I think partying is. When you're happy, when you're having fun. I'm always having fun. You redefine so, what a party is. A too. party, yeah. Someone said to me, actually, it was John Norris when I did the interview for Billboard. He's like, you know, you're the, it's our party, can't stop the party girl. So has the party stopped? I'm like, absolutely not. I'm having a party when I'm playing with the pigs. I'm having a party <laughs> when I'm doing my yoga. I'm having a party when I'm here with you guys. I'm always partying. I'm happy. I'm having fun. I'm always partying. Love That's it. I'm partying perfect. now. F yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you also, I mean, you also had that time. You had that lifestyle and it gets yeah. old, you know? Yeah, and for sure. If someone's got a good show coming up too, I love to go see shows. I went and saw Future and Drake. It was like cool. awesome. And so that was a party to me. And, you know, I didn't didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't anything, but just wanted to watch. And how, I, I love to party. How are you watching that show? Are you taking mental notes? Are you, you judging their stage presence? I was freaking out about how the girls treat Drake like he's Bieber. Like, he got on this, like, thing and floated across the crowd. And girls were really freaking like they freaking out. And it's, like, adult women at this point. Like, yeah. I'm looking at people like, you damn adults. Like, <laughs> and they are losing their mind. I was just shocked because I just always, like, you know, that's, to me, I, I, I don't really, like, do that. So it was crazy to see girls really, like, lose their mind, you know, like, yeah. in, the, in that way. It's kind of crazy. What is it, though, about him, you think, right? Like, like He because, wears sweaters. It's sweet. That's he's like, nice. He wears sweaters. He's the cute guy. He, that, he's yeah, a yeah. safe guy, but he's also a little dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And I think he's also, I think he's got great melodies as well. Mm. I've also heard from Mike, because I don't really know him personally, but Mike Wills always told me he's the he could do... He would annihilate us in the rap game. No offense. In this little rap thing. Sorry, Heather. You're the best in the room. Uh, but he, once Drake comes in, you're toast. Because Mike told me that he, you could give him anything and that he can just rap about anything at any time and make sick melodies. And I love that he puts melodies into wow. the rap world. I think it's really cool. Is there a musical ability you wish you had? You have so many, but like you, I don't know. I'd if like you can... to be able to play more instruments. I, I actually, I have a bass player that's on the road with me right now. A very cool chick bass player. I got more girls in my band than I've ever had. We wanted to Sweet. outnumber the dudes. So I've got nice. keyboardists, right. singers, bass player, me, and she plays an upright bass. And oh, it is cool. so sick. Dope. And she's super like small and is wearing some hot shorts at the show. <laughs> wearing short shorts, playing an upright bass. I just think it's the hottest thing I've ever heard. That, wow. Yeah, come on, look at it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm in. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. If there is ever, if they ever approach you with a Hannah Montana spinoff. Dude. What? I had to go to Disney the other day to promote, and that was, the, you know, that was the first thing oh, they said. Yeah. Because well, Raven's back. I know. I'm and, really excited for that. That's going to be my binge watch of the year for sure. Um, but probably not. No. Okay. Probably not because I'm just like, I don't even know what's up. Also, it's a lot of time to be spent with my dad. Yeah. You know, my dad with my dad on the show. <laughs> I have enough dad time. That was really hard every day from like 11 to 18 spending. I didn't get a school escape like most people. Nothing. I went to work with my dad. And then I started driving my dad towards the end, you know, because then I could start driving. 
And then also my grandma went with me every day. So I was a lot of time dad and grandma. That's why, like, as soon as I turned 18, you guys wonder why I was, like, twerking at Juicy J shows. That's- I had just spent 10 years every day with my dad and grandma. <laughs> there yeah. was no other option. Yeah. You had to break free. I had to break free. Wow. And you're excited for The Voice. We got J Hud, Kelly Clarkson. Yes, I'm very, very excited. And I, yeah, I didn't even know everyone and yesterday knew about J Hud. So I felt like I had known this big secret. And now it's really fun to be able to talk about it. And, um, you know, I had a great time with Alicia. And so I hope that her and I kind of have that same kind of bond because yeah. it really helped to be against the veterans. Two like, you know. American mm-hmm. Idol alum, by the way. Yeah, exactly. You know what's really crazy, though, is going into this scenario with someone that's done. 10 seasons of something yeah. and like you know i don't really watch that much tv i don't really so i don't i don't ever know the how to calculate and what works that i yeah. just do what feels best and so this year i learned i learned the game a little bit better so now i think i'm ready with new tactics next time hell yeah yeah i'm coming for blake love for he you miley too much too he's much. the one you yeah, have to go for much. him i will love for you miley cyrus thank you so much for having me this thank, is you so much for thank you for doing this thank you